Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Cosmo Live. I'm Amy O'Dell, I'm the editor of Cosmopolitan.com. And today we have a very special guest joining us, Gracie Gold, Olympic figure skater. Very exciting. So tweet us if you would like to ask Gracie a question with the hashtag AskGracie and the hashtag Cosmo Live. I am here with my lovely editorial team, Alex Reese, who's normally in from London and is actually <laughs> sitting next to me IRL. Hey, Surprise. Alex. Hi. Georgia Day stateside. Very Yay. excited. <laughs> you <laughs> sound nervous. I'm a little bit nervous. It's different than it's, me. Yeah, I know. I don't have like a little screen a in the corner. Giant right? plant behind Front you. Front and center. There's no plant. Should have brought a plant to me. I know. You can't drink from your giant soda bottle. I can't. There's no tea either. It's just, oh, I'm have not tea. in England. We anymore. have a tea, but it's probably lifted. <laughs> um, also, Carly Cardellino, our beauty editor. Hey guys. Frank Cabola, relationships blogger, also known as Cosmo Frank. How's it going? CJ, our resident shirtless hottie. Anna Breslov, <laughs> resident shirt wearing love for now. writer. <laughs> shirt wearing for now. Elisa Benson, our social media editor, who will be reading your tweets throughout the broadcast. So again, don't forget to tweet us at Cosmopolitan with the hashtag AskGracie and the hashtag CosmoLive. Oh, Gracie, we're so excited that you're here. Yeah, no, this is really exciting. <laughs> and we're even more excited that you are currently doing a performance to the Frozen song Let It Go. Mm -hmm. for Stars on Ice, which is a tour that you're currently doing. Yeah, it just had its opening weekend in Florida, and it had a really great turnout. Um, the crowd in Orlando was especially good. And NBC is going to play an hour of it, um, and we're going to start the East Coast, go through Chicago, and finish on the West Coast. And the internet is going to break because you're doing the Frozen song, yeah. and the internet loves nothing more than Frozen right now. Yeah, I mean, it just won the two Oscars, and the Adele Dazeem thing really helps <laughs> <laughs> let it go. And it's like, it's a really fun number, though. It's a great song. How did you pick that song? Well, I went to see, so I didn't want to see Frozen. I was not in, like, a Disney mood, and I thought, Whoa. this is going to be, like, weird. And then <laughs> I went, um, my sister made me go, and with my mom, and I loved it. And um, my sister looks like Anna, and I look like Elsa, and we were playing it on the rink one day. And I said, I, I have to skate to this. I, just, I have to. So it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that um, you were trying to decide how to do your hair so that you look like Elsa. Mm -hmm. And the braid wasn't quite working. Yeah, because it's really hard to skate with just like, well, first of all, I don't have like magic volume that appears when I go like this. You know, Carly can give you that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually. I can show you a tutorial. <laughs> you have magic volume right now. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> yeah, and then it's kind of hard to skate when, like, a braid whips you in the face. Oh, okay. Because um, you'll do a jump, oh. and it's like, ow. And then you have a couple strands, but um, long curls are working, but I'm going to try the magic volume tutorial. Yes. So I'll let I'm you know how that goes. To you. Long curls don't hit you in the face because the braid is, like, a rope. Yeah, and then it's just kind of like a okay. gentle... Like a whip. Like a caress. Like, yeah, like a gentle <laughs> caress. <laughs> There you go. Elisa, do we have any questions from um, on Twitter? We have lots of questions, but first I want to ask you my own question. Yeah. <laughs> Which is speaking of hair. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting when we were doing a lot of coverage of the Olympics was one of the things that our fashion editor, Charles, reported was that our, that figure skaters are actually not technically allowed to wear any jewelry. But you do. Break the rules. Yeah, you can. You all do. Yeah, you can wear, like, a little bit, but um, it can't. What well, ending up on the ice is... That's like worst nightmare. Right. Um, and you then mean, you, like if an earring falls out or something. Yeah, and so that's definitely one reason. Um, because it's not safe. Yeah, because if you're skating and you run over an earring or a necklace or a bracelet, um, that that'll spiral out of fall. control. Well, yeah, because then the person would fall. Yeah. Um, you could damage your blade, I guess, and then that could be that'd be a mess. Um, well, why is it a mess if you damage your blade? Well, it'd be your bracelet would damage maybe like another competitor's blade. It's oh, like I that scene saying. from okay. Showgirls where she throws the diamonds <laughs> on the floor and the dancer falls over. I was gonna say it's like I, an accidental <laughs> I'm just yeah, I'm just wondering because like obviously you're in the thick of it and, and our knowledge of figure skating is superficial. We're just like, oh my god, she's so pretty, that's so great. And that's sort of all we know about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then if people don't you're know thinking the half of what it's going it. really well and then they slip over an invisible bracelet then you're like, oh, it's not so pretty anymore. <laughs> yeah, so, we had a live tweet. I, I was helping Emma Barker, who's not in this room, live tweet the, uh, the Olympics for figure skating, and it was just like, ooh. It was like we had nothing to do. It was like pretty. <laughs> I Absolutely nothing witty to say. 
at all. Like, I just cry every time I watch you perform. <laughs> like, maybe right now. But it's so beautiful. I love the So does my mom. So does my mom. <laughs> I have something in common with your mom. <laughs> That's great. Um, so anyway, Twitter questions. Um, we have a lot of people. Um, I actually wanted to ask you this question, too. But um, Juliet says, first of all, sending love from Holland. But she asks, can you start figure skating when you're 18 years old? And I'm, sh I'm actually curious about that, too. Could somebody who's grown up learn how to do all the things? Like Elisa. Like me. It's not traditional. Um, usually people start when they're really young, like any really competitive sport. And um, like the younger, um, just like your body is, it's a lot easier to do some of the stuff. If you're like, you know, 14, 70 pounds, it's a lot easier to get all the way around and jump high. Um, I suppose if you had enough time and dedication um, and talent, it maybe could be done, but... But probably not. It would be very difficult and unlikely. Okay. But how many years have you been skating for? Um, Eleven years this summer. Eleven years. So you started when you were seven? Um, eight. I'll be 19 eight. this summer. Oh, you're almost 19. Yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> the Cosmo years. <laughs> Um, okay, what a lot of people um, at this, shout out to Gigi, what advice can you give to girls who want to take their skating to the next level? Um, well, definitely reevaluate your off ice um, training situation because that's a big thing that people forget about is compensating your workout off the ice because maybe on ice only works um, certain muscles and it only hits certain places. Um, you don't really get a great ab workout while you're skating, but you have to have a really strong core because if you're coming down on a blade, you have to have super balance. You can't be like flopping everywhere. Right. So yeah. what do you do, like Pilates or yoga or something? Um, yoga when I have time, but a lot of, um, I know a lot of people do Pilates. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have a great Pilates studio by my house, but yoga, um, hot yoga when, like on the weekends or, I mean it's not cold in LA so I don't need to anymore, but it's, I just love hot yoga. And it's like the opposite of ice skating. <laughs> yeah, actually, ice skating in California is really big and it's really yeah. popular, which is um, interesting. Most people assume that it happens on just in the cold parts, but it's really big in California. Interesting. And um, we have um, actually a fan joining us today, Kayla from Wisconsin. Hey, Kayla, can you hear us? Hi, Ken. Hello. How are you? Good. How's Wisconsin? It's going to be great weather today. No snow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of a low bar, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, especially since April. <laughs> uh, we're so excited that you're joining us for Cosmo Live today. Did you have a question that you wanted to ask Gracie? I do. So during the Olympics, your coach looked very stoic. Is there a different face he makes when he's disappointed? And then how do you deal with the disappointment within yourself or from others? Um, well, at 74, Frank is pretty stoic, and he's had <laughs> numerous Olympic medalists and, um, like, nine-time national champion. Um, he coached Michelle Kwan um, and Evan Leischeck. He coached, like, everyone. So um, his face was rather stoic. There are actually um, some really funny memes online. Um, and then he had been out of women's skating for a little bit, so he didn't know when the score was read out loud if it was good or not. And so he actually turned to me and he's like, is that a good score? He's like, <laughs> and he was trying to like see it. And um, when he's disappointed, he doesn't necessarily make a face, but he'll just calmly explain to you why you're such a disappointment. <laughs> but um, um, that like knife through the heart. Yeah, then you're like, oh, oh man. When someone yells and is mad. Yeah, more like the Russian way. Yeah, yeah. Like, you guys like, <laughs> like, like up front. You know what's going on. The Russian way? <laughs> Yeah, like the, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Um, but Frank's like, um, that was really not a good attempt, and that was really bad. Um, so um, could you just, maybe we should get off, and maybe you could just take the day off to reevaluate um, how you feel about, I have I had only one of those. I was like, oh, my God, it was just disappointment. It's like, oh, my God, I let everyone down. Uh, disappointment for myself, definitely the hardest. Um, from other people, you just kind of have to listen to the people, the people's opinions that really matter, like Frank's. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, when you're doing a competition like the Olympics, there's so much coverage of every single thing you're doing. Like you can't make a certain face, otherwise it will go viral. 
Yeah, it's um, so there how are cameras much do you everywhere. Pay, how much do you pay attention to that coverage on Tumblr, on Reddit, what have you, when you're going through a competition like the Olympics? Going through a competition, it's hard because you want to post all the cool things, especially in a unique place like Sochi where everyone stateside and in other countries wanted to know what it was actually like. But there were a lot of controversial things at the games and um, people can be really mean on like Tumblr and Reddit. So there's a fine line. Um, there are cameras everywhere. So, um, and we were probably, I mean, there are microphones at the boards, at the rink, in the kiss and cry, backstage. Um, even in the locker rooms, there were some cameras. Um, they were removed, though. Um, but in the warm-up area, so you were on camera 24-7. So you had to be really careful about what you wanted to put out there and what you wanted to put forward. If you weren't, like, in your room with your roommate, someone was probably watching you. That sounds so stressful. It was a little hard, especially when you maybe just needed, like, a little, like, emotional release. You couldn't just, like, throw your hands up or just, like, make a face. It was, because it was going to be posted online. Um, everyone watches the Olympics. Yes. We loved it. We loved every second of the figure skating, that's for sure. What about um, costumes? How do you choose your costume? It's definitely a long process. I actually had a couple of costumes this year before we decided on the blue one and the red one. Um, everyone has their own opinion, and some people like this, some people like the sparkles, other people like just like simple. Um, Frank isn't a huge sparkle fan. Um, when it comes to rhinestones, he thinks it gets gaudy very quickly. I'm the opposite. Which, um, when you think of skating, you think of like rhinestones. So. We had to like work together on that, um, but it just really depends on your music, and you just kind of start. Maybe the dressmaker has some ideas, or someone you have to start. You have to start somewhere. So someone has to put an idea out, and then you build from there. Mm -hmm. So everything is custom made for you. Mm -hmm, absolutely. How many fittings do you have before you decide on uh, a look for a performance? Well, in a perfect world, when your dressmaker has your measurements and your sizes, it's you kind of design it, you make it, and it's perfect. But often, you know, sleeves are a little long, maybe the neck is tight, this is loose, um, the skirt's long or it's too short, so it can, it's quite the process. I feel like a lot more probably goes into it than the average person thinks. It's, they probably think you go into the skating J.C. Penny and pull something off the rack, <laughs> and then it's and then just go, you know. Yeah, and it's um, it's actually hard to make a skating dress because you have to use kind of stretch material. So pretty much you're limited to like stretch velvet or lycra, and it can really only be like this big. But you have to like do all this stuff and then crystalling. And if you dip dye like the different colors, that takes like days or weeks to dry. Really? Yeah, it can take like up to a week to fully dry, I guess. Wow. Um, Carly, I wore, Carly wore a skating costume. Yeah, it was so tight. For a story. <laughs> we called in some skating costumes and we wore them. I don't even know how you move around in them. I couldn't even walk down the street to the bar where we took pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how do they know how to? Yeah, um, it, it helps when they're comfortable, but occasionally you'll get one that just literally rubs you the wrong way. So. <laughs> well, yes. I had read um, on Cosmopolitan.com, again, our fashion editor Charles did this piece that I thought was fascinating all about costuming and um, said that figure skaters, you could never just wear a leotard, like it has to have the skirt, but that you could wear pants, like a pantsuit, which I think would be really chic. Yeah, actually, um, well, for a while, women couldn't wear pants, and right. then they, um, they allowed that, and... Um, Would you ever? Um, depending on the music, it's still, and, like, what kind of image you want. Yeah. Um, you could. I mean, it's definitely been done before. Um, it's popular with a lot of the Russian women. They've worn some pantsuits before. Um, and jumpsuits are really in right now, yeah. so we might see more of them. And now that you can have lyrics in your music the next coming seasons, oh, I, didn't know. I think that yeah, is going to be a game changer. Yeah. yeah, it'll be really interesting because... Are you going to skate to Beyonce? Would you ever skate to a rap song? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to remember that the, the judges are... Um, it's Sadly. Well, figure skating is really rooted in tradition. It's really mm -hmm. traditional still. So I think that maybe if you just came up out with a Beyonce, um, you're going to get a mixed bag of judge feedback. Um, so Notorious B.I.G. is out. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to like give it a season or two to see how people yeah. respond, but <laughs> you know, we'll see, I guess. <laughs> if you could skate to any song, what would it be? Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> They're already doing that, so you have to pick another one. Well, that would still be my note. I'm not doing predict? it for competition, What do you, since everybody maybe? is going to play it safe the first 
time that they're going to let lyrics in, what do you think most people are going to pick? Celine Dion or Bette Like what genre? Like yeah, like what type of music? Yeah, it would be something like timeless. It would be like ballads? Um, yeah, something yeah. beautiful. Um, probably a lot of, because Ice Dance can have lyrics, like Marilyn Charlie. Mm -hmm. um, they, they can have lyrics. Or like, we're obsessed with them. Yeah. yeah. They're great. Yeah, they're so awesome. Are, really, are you really good friends with everybody on the team? Yeah, actually, we're really, I mean, winning an Olympic medal together, like, really brings people together. So we're a really close-knit group. What did you do with your medal now that you have it? It's, like, displayed on my mantle. I never wear it because, well, first of all, it's really heavy because it's solid bronze and crystal. Um, it's, it's really heavy. But I also, like, I don't want to touch it. Like, what if I were to drop it or something or, like, the ribbon were to rip? So it's just kind of displayed there. Where people can look, but no touching. Right? I don't, it's not like really an accessory. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a prize. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Why um, do Olympic athletes always take the photo where they're like biting the medal? You know, I, I only have one, and they asked for it, and then I said, oh, no, like I, I don't want it to. And they, they really insisted. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> photographers insist? Yeah. Probably it's, because it's people like us thing. post those. <laughs> <laughs> I think it started, they like wanted to make sure it was like real gold, yeah. but yeah. now it's like this thing where you do it for all colors and everyone has to do it. So Interesting. So you were forced against your will. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I felt weird just kind of, and then the picture doesn't just like snap. You kind of have to like hold it in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to put my Olympic medal in my mouth. <laughs> it seemed like a normal I think that's normal. <laughs> thing. Alex, you, you had a funny story about... Um, Going ice skating and being unable to. Yeah, I mean, I found myself just completely paralyzed by nerves. And I was there with a <laughs> bunch of kids who were just, like, whizzing around. And I do think, like you were saying earlier, it's to do with starting young and just having that confidence. Do you think if you don't start with that confidence, it can ever grow? Or do you just need to have it from the get-go? No, I mean, I've seen people that become, um, like, in, like, the little learn to skate classes, mm -hmm. and at first they're afraid, but they see others do it, and then they start to get more adventurous. But, I mean, even, there are some kids that are absolutely paralyzed with fear. Like, right. they will not leave the board. They will not leave okay. their parents' arms. It is just, it's not for them. <laughs> do you me. have any tips for, <laughs> for grown people like Alex and me who can't skate to save their lives? How can we skate with minimal embarrassment? Um, well, actually, a lot of times they have, like, the little walker things. That, <laughs> that is, like, perfect. I wouldn't say that's minimal embarrassment. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, then you can kind of get going. Because if you're just on the wall the whole time, and then if the board's in, it's, like, they get really thick. I would actually pay to see you guys use this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for a future video, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Some are nicer well, than ice others. Skating on, on walkers. You can put cards with the five stones on. Yeah, that would be glamorous. Because the worst thing about when you're just holding onto the wall is then somebody who's like out of control will barrel into you, and I'm like too scared to move away, and then it's just a lose lose. So. Okay, the last thing I want to ask you before I let you go: um, Do you ever just like go skating like incognito, just like in Central Park, and um, then like bust actually... out before like? <laughs> um, because I feel like I would do that all the time if I were you. <laughs> It's and it's hard because in like an ice rink and everything, um, I'm actually recognized really often, um, which is kind of weird for me. I because I, I, I like to be incognito sometimes um, and just like a fly on the wall. Um, so it's kind of weird. Anytime you walk in an ice rink, people are like, "Oh my god, like are you like the greasy gold?" Sometimes they put the in front, which is really cute. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's okay. Did you ever say no? No, I haven't. But um, that's what Carly. That's what my mom suggested. She's like, "Well, you could always say no." So, but then I feel really embarrassed, and the the kid the kid wouldn't know. They just went up to a stranger. It wasn't the Gracie Gold. That's really that's nice true. Yeah. Every time I go to that ice skating rink in New York, like in Rockefeller Center, mm -hmm. somebody gets engaged. Every time, actually, there's always like the proposal on the ice. Yeah, and the we went to a figure skating in Harlem event, which um, it's like an organization that helps. Uh, low-income families um, and girls who wouldn't have the opportunity to skate, skate, and there was a proposal there. <laughs> so it's, it's, I don't exactly know what it is, yeah. but there's something about, like, skating and especially one in the wintertime with, like, the tree. Rockefeller's beautiful. Yeah, um, but romantic. there's, yeah, there have actually been, um, I was uh, January, both past Januaries, I've skated there for the Today Show, and yeah. in the skating after, sometimes they say they have, like, lines. Like, each session can only have, like, one proposal. Oh, my gosh. Which is kind of amazing, but... Would you want to be proposed to on the ice? I don't know if I would, but my sister does. Carly would love to have a really? skating proposal. Um, 
I don't, I don't know if you can really do a skating wedding because a lot of the guests wouldn't be able to. Um, give them the water. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, you have to yeah. have like the water to your seat. I think you should combine Amy's idea of going incognito and skating just for fun, and then like stealing the thunder of whoever just got proposed to. <laughs> like he'll be down on one knee and everyone's clapping, and then you just like whiz by and do like one of those crazy jumps. And everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just steal her it. moment. This will go viral. <laughs> that would steal her moment and his moment. Yeah. But like their moments. That I would be like, you have that'd be a relationship ruiner. <laughs> Forever. I mean, would you advise that? I wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> unless, actually, you should be on standby in case she says no. Because in that way, when he's skating away dejectedly, which has to look really sad, you can just kind of. I mean, that's true. Here. I guess when you get turned down, it's like the worst, wor even worse than getting turned down on no not yeah. slippery. If, if I propose <laughs> on ice, I'm going to have you on retainer just in case, <laughs> so I can like make a clean exit. Actually, uh, Michelle Kwan was at the event, and she was she helped propose. Um, she wanted a picture with Michelle, and then they all had all the flashes. Um, and then she turned around and he was on one knee. And so actually, Aww. skaters have helped with proposals. It was really cute. cute. It was so cute. And we were behind the curtain, and so I was hearing like all this commotion. And they were like, oh my god, is she, she said yes. And I thought, oh, that's weird. It sounds like a proposal. And I kind of like peer out of the curtain, like some of the Olympic skaters, and it's like happening. Like the proposal's Aww. happening like right there. It was so cute. That's so sweet. See, that's when you needed to skate out there and just like push them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, act like you're out of control. That would be you, Anna. <laughs> crazy. Well, I wouldn't skate anywhere. I would just run out onto the ice and push you them. You could get a walk or two. Okay, well, Gracie, it was so great having you. Thank you so much yeah, for thank joining you guys. us today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We are going to take a quick break and watch Cosmopolitan.com's latest new show, The Cosmo Catch Up, and we will be right back. Welcome to the Catch Up. I'm Taylor and I'll be your guide. Spring is upon us. Hooray for floral prints and lighter hair colors. Which brings me to my first topic of the day. Reasons to be excited for spring. Reason number one. You can frolic through gardens provided that you have a backyard or a park nearby or an agreement with your neighbor. I don't know your situation. Decorating yourself with flowers is acceptable. Again, go for it. Make a crown. Wear that floral skirt. Put a bird on your head. Sarah Jessica Parker can do it. I don't see why I can't. Miranda, you care too much about being respected at work. Samantha, you're such a slut. Hello, lover. Shit. Since the weather is heating up, and clothing is going to be a lot more on the optional side, you might want to get back into the gym and start using that membership that you've been paying for all of 2014 but haven't used since January 15th. You said this was the year! Cosmopolitan.com featured some common problems that people face when they go to the gym, and I'd like to share them with you right now. First, you need to motivate yourself. Motivate yourself. I personally like to gather all the empty pizza boxes in my apartment and use them to build a life-size cardboard Jillian Michaels that I then argue with about my diet choices and my sedentary lifestyle. Next up, you're going to really need to brace yourselves because once you get to the locker room, it's going to be full of naked ladies with their boobs out. I appreciate this part because it allows me to double check that everything's normal on my own body. You have, I have two of those, you have two of those. You're going to want to charge your iPod or your iPhone. I can't tell you how many times I've fallen off the elliptical because Gloria Estefan powered off and I was left without a rhythm. Come on, do that conga! <laughs> Lastly, know your machines, be aware of your stamina. If I could count all the times I attempted to mount a bike without... Actually, you know what? That wasn't a bike. That was a police horse. That's it for today. I'm Taylor Ortega. Jane Fonda is my everything. And this is the Cosmo Ketchup. I love that show, you guys. It's so funny. It's <laughs> so great. <laughs> we have to have her on Cosmo Live. So Gracie was amazing. Loved her. Obsessed. Dying. <laughs> <laughs> you were really dying. You were really excited. Every time I looked over, you just had that look in your eyes. <laughs> like you were sitting next to Beyonce. Well, yeah. I well, she's like the Beyonce she of skating. She is. The Beyonce of skating. And you pretty much consistently sound like you're about to pass out. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Anna told me I always sound like I'm on the verge of hysteria. Just to be true. But, um, you know, we all knew she was going to be super sweet, but she's so funny. She's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah I mean, she's, she's gorgeous, gorgeous. On, 
on screen when you see her on TV. But I mean, she's that's why beautiful. she's a she's a cover girl. Yeah, she's beautiful. She's, she's yeah, like truly, she's, a, really she's literally a cover girl, right? I'm sure she does more in a day than I do in a month. <laughs> Do we have any tweets from readers about her? Oh my god, I, you know, I feel bad. I'm sorry readers, I was asking so many of my own questions, but we did get a lot of, we did get a lot of questions <laughs> and from readers. Um, and I was we can answer them as if we're famous ice skaters. Okay. So, um, ask Gracie, do you have any good luck charms or superstitions for when you skate? Mm. Pearls. She had them pearls. Yeah, that's what she I do. Yeah. I just mostly look lovely, I think. And that's just like what I'm going to pretty much charmed. <laughs> and I work really hard. You should I exercise that. every I day. I mostly look lovely. <laughs> I mostly look lovely. Bye, yeah. Anna Bredlock. Anna Bredlock. Okay, so we were going to move into talking about um, girl sports story ideas. Yes? Yes. I have a ton. You have a ton. Yeah. Okay, well, I know Kayla is still with us and has an idea that she wants to pitch as well. <laughs> so, Elisa, do you want to kick us off before we turn it back to Kayla? Absolutely. Um, so... <laughs> First of all, did you guys know, I was looking at stats before our meeting, that over 50% of women in high school play sports. So that's obviously high school. A lot of our readers are older than that. But really, a lot of the people who are writing to played sports at one point in their life. But when two things happening recently that I thought were really interesting and we should find a way to cover, um, one of which is this idea that athletes are being recruited younger and younger. The Times did a piece earlier this year about women being recruited when they're in middle school, signing contracts to or basically making verbal agreements to accept scholarships at colleges. They were saying that this specifically happens with women because they tend to mature faster than men, mm -hmm. so they're more of a target. And everyone sort of knows this is happening. The NCAA is turning a blind eye to it. But I thought it would be really interesting to follow up with some women who are college athletes who either made these commitments, you know, at this point five years ago, or on the flip side, women who made a commitment when they were in eighth grade and then now are saying, like, no way, I don't even want to do this anymore. Because that's a pretty big decision to make when you're 13. Early on. Yeah. Exactly. So I thought that was really interesting. And then the other thing, as a former cheerleader, I'm obsessed with cheerleading. Wait, you? <laughs> Surprise. It's <laughs> shocking news. But um, you know, there's a lot of the professional sports teams are hiring their squads now. There's just a huge lawsuit that came out because yeah. it's kind of been a scandal for a while about professional sports teams underpaying their cheerleaders even as the teams are raking in more and more money. Mm -hmm. And you have these women that think that this is a great opportunity that are really being underpaid to the extent of violation of the law and then in some cases being emotionally abused, charged if they gain weight, etc. Right. So it just ESPN has kind of been Or if they're this. not tan, right? Yeah. But um, you know, this has been pretty widely reported, but I feel like it's definitely something we could find like the Cosmo angle on. Mm -hmm. And Carly, you interviewed uh, a few cheerleaders for, for the, the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. Maybe we could contact them and get their thoughts on it. Yeah, but you talked to them also about how <laughs> they their have beauty to, routine and Well, they have to tan, they have to Oh yeah. A lot of them do. It's intense. Yeah. Their regimens are really intense, especially leading up to the Super Bowl. Do you remember what some of their regimens were? I mean, they were going to the gym every day. They were obviously eating really healthy, but they were going to, to the tanning salon. One of the girls was, was fake tanning, which is obviously the best thing to do for your skin. You mean <laughs> spray tanning? Spray tanning, or she would, she would apply it herself. But not going to a tanning bed. Although some of them do go to tanning beds, which is really bad for No, your some skin. of them do, yeah. Yeah. But they, they look that orangish-brown. They all have the same... Shade, I feel. You know? Orange is brown. Orange is brown. <laughs> it's not like a normal shade. Because you're, <laughs> you're going so much, it's like over, you're overly tan. You know? But that's, yes. they're wearing like a shirt that's this big, so I guess when you're exposing the majority of your torso. <laughs> right, it's like being in the, some like <clears throat> underwear fashion show. Right. I mean, or it's intense. Pageant, yeah. I'm sure there's more to it, though. We could continue. Yeah, you should follow up with them. Okay. Kayla. Yes. Hi. <laughs> so you, you have a story idea for us, right? Yeah. So I was wondering about women that work in or perform in sports that are mostly male dominant and what their stories are like. And so I know of a strength and conditioning coach that is the only female in the U.S. And I was wondering what her story was like and how she or what she had to overcome to get where she is. So you mean women who work um, in men's sports mm -hmm. as coaches or trainers or something like that? 
Yep, or even like a female wrestler or something like that in her perspective of being in a sport that's mostly male. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would be really interesting to talk to women who are working for men's teams. I think it's all really interesting when you think about it, like when they are refereeing or even when they're commentating on sports, the reaction always seems to be, what are they doing? Like they don't know what they're talking about or they don't have the authority to do this. And obviously, if they have gotten to that level, they probably have more than enough authority because they've had to kind of fight against it every step of the career ladder that far. Mm -hmm. That could be really interesting. And also. Alex, you had an idea about uh, women's rugby? Yes. I just uh, actually... Can you elaborate? Because you used to play rugby, right? I used to play yeah, very badly. Um, <laughs> my, dad, <laughs> my dad's a huge I think he once fan. told me you had a pink mouth guard or something like that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> not but those, that. Yeah, no, those kinds of things are actually really effective because if you're really gay, it can actually intimidate <laughs> other rugby players. When you're, like, when you're in a scrum and you're really gay, like hetero guys will get really nervous. Because you can be like, I'm totally going to tweak your ball. And, which you can do in a rugby game anyway, I'm pretty sure. I also have and, the title of your future autobiography. When you're in a scrum and you're really gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been there. Um, <laughs> but women's rugby is like insane. Uh, my boyfriend's sister plays rugby um, a ton. And I feel like they're even rougher than the guys I used to play rugby with. And there's also like a really intense party culture surrounding women's rugby because it's kind of niche at the moment. I just think it's really interesting. That's about it. So what would you, you would like spend a day with a women's I rugby think, team? I think that would be really, really fascinating because like their games are always really early in the morning mm -hmm. and then they're pretty much drinking from noon. <laughs> and then, I mean, I've only been around a couple of women's rugby teams, so I don't want to smear the whole sport. But, <laughs> but don't all of you just start drinking at noon over well, in the yeah, UK? That's pretty true. Yeah, that's like a late, a late start. That's actually. a late start. So are you <laughs> secretly drunk all day when you're vlogging over there, and we don't know what you're really doing? Yeah, What's much. really in that teacup? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vodka. Yeah. What is it? Tea, really? <laughs> tea time. Anna, what's your idea? Um, I'm not one? a big sports. Uh, I'm not a big sports fan. Uh, like watching or playing. Um, but I had a couple ideas, like the worst sports ranked. And like, why... <laughs> like one of your ideas is, ugh. <laughs> it's, ugh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, continue. Um, and then also why kickball is horrible. I hate kickball, too. And dodgeball. And dodgeball, you live, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, you live in Brooklyn where these things are popular. Oh, yeah. No, I don't, adult things, I don't, I don't. No, I know you're like for fun. And but like, you're just like I'm a grown person it. who wants to join a kickball team. I, I just... went to play dodgeball once just after I moved to New York and like within five minutes somebody had thrown a ball like and then you're not supposed to throw it at their face. Like that's the rules. And somebody threw it at my face and I dropped my ball to like avoid being hit in the face and then they told me I'd lost. I was really upset. Like, that was the well, end of my story. Well, you know, story. like that thing—that thing that's like, uh, if you if there's a gun in Act One, it's gonna go off in Act Three. Every time I walk into a room where there is a ball, it's like that's gonna hit me in the face, and it never fails. I consistently, I'll be in Central Park, and there will be a ball across a huge field, and it will end up hitting me in the face every single time. That's why you're the sex writer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I did kick off one of those like seasons. And yeah, it's pretty awful. I did it mostly to drink afterwards because you get like free beers. Like I didn't like but you the could day just camp. Skip I don't like it now. Yeah. Never you couldn't. Like you, had to, you had to go to the kickball first. Wait, one of my friends. So friends, you did it for the people. Yeah. Wait, one of my friends' friends met her fiance now husband at, at kickball. They both joined kickball and they found love at, on a kickball. Court. Was that the purpose though? They That's should write true. a story for us. No, I don't know. I maybe she was joining. Like, isn't like, anybody other guys. in the history of this adult kickball league thing been like? <laughs> I'm joining it for the love of the game? Or is it always just like, I want to have sex people with get, people? People get super into Yeah, they want to date people, and they want to drink during and after. That's CJ, you do, do you play kickball? Without playing that horrible game in the middle of those things. <laughs> CJ, you're grinning like you do play kickball. I would totally play kickball. You would, but <laughs> yeah. do you? I play uh, co-ed softball with my acting agency. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Acting What's your position? Softball. Uh, my position is, it, it changes, we all switch up, but... I'll His position is for it. <laughs> Do you pitch? No, no, we always have a, a lady pitch. Why? I don't know. Because you would throw the ball too hard? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like couples who play sports together, though, that's kind of weird. I would get really competitive. 
I played that tennis with, with or my like fiance. against that, like against against. Like, I played tennis. I mean, I wore flip flops and sort of stood there and did that sometimes. <laughs> like that was against other people or no? Just no, it was like just you on. Like we just <laughs> stood around with rackets and there were balls and I, just I never you ran like boredly standing in front of one of those machines that like shoots balls at you. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like all the worst. No, as they say, <laughs> as they say in Clueless, I don't do activities where balls fly at my face. <laughs> I know I don't even know the name of that machine, but this is the wrong topic for us. <laughs> exactly. Well, we Although you guys are both cheerleaders, though, so yeah. I, I played all kinds. Of I think we should do a lot on cheerleading, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sort of endlessly interesting. I love it. What I should we write about cheerleading? <laughs> oh, how did, how it, how it feels to be the at the top of the pyramid? I could write that, like emotionally and spiritually. Were you at the top of the pyramid? Wow, how'd you get? Are up you there? drunk, Cosmo? <laughs> <laughs> no, how seriously. did I get up there? I jumped on two girls' hands, and they. Did you ever get injured? Um, I I broke my thumb, but I was doing a back handspring. I sat on some girl's head and broke her nose. Sorry, Lauren Elliott. <laughs> um, Women get injured in cheerleading all the time because yeah. in most schools, it's not. There's no funding for it. It's not considered a sport. You don't have a practice space. You don't have mats. You don't have equipment. You have a volunteer mom instead of a real coach. Like I remember, even like a million years ago when I was in high school and college, it was like that was a big de debate about cheerleading. Like, is it a sport? Is it really? not? And the repercussions go behind just like, do you identify as an athlete? Like, that can affect whether something is funded and safe and regulated. Our but school really was totally behind it. We had all those things. We because we went to nationals a lot. We were yeah. we were really good. But um, we we <laughs> I'm like we were amazing. <laughs> no, we were that. We were really good. <laughs> No, but um, I mean, I think it's like when you're competing on that level, it's like those are the schools competing on that level are the schools that realize that it's a sport and it's yeah. competitive and it's exciting and it's but fun it's not and like it's that a good for opportunity. Every school. We're like reenacting Bring It On, like verbally right now. <laughs> like, no, but it's, yeah. but she's right. It's not like that for a lot of it's schools. It's the Clovers yeah. and the what? Clovers and the I don't know. Is Kirsten it like that where, like, yeah. in uh, like as somebody who's not American and didn't go to an American high school, is it always like the cheerleaders are? Like the head bitches in charge in the high school hierarchy. So I went or? to high school in Texas, and we had something called the High Line, which were um, a dance team that looked like they came from the 80s. Amazing. They all had to wear. I'm not kidding. They all had to wear the same like nude, like fleshy tights, and oh. they had like a big sequin star, and they wore little cowboy hats and fringed booties. Amazing. We should do like best cheerleading outfits. They were. It was the dance team. Oh. But they were probably really good. Or no. <laughs> as good as you, one can be doing football themed thing. I don't know. So they didn't compete. It wasn't like a competitive they, dance. They like, kicked their legs up high and stuff. <laughs> they didn't they probably know. did. I don't know. But for me, it was just like uh, a <laughs> racket. Because I hate football. And I went to a school. I went to Westlake High School. And it was just all about football. And you were just like, oh, they're kicking you. They had a jumbo <laughs> shot at the foot. Like, this is insane. Right? Really? You were like real life Friday Night wow. Lights. Yeah, it was like Friday Night Lights. Like, the games would sell out. <laughs> wow. wow. Like, I'm just like, who gives a. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Way to stop the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are people saying on Twitter, Aliza? Um, somebody tweeted at us. Rachel Levine says, I used to wear female cups while playing field hockey in high school. I was the goalie. Which, were we even talking about that? But I think it's interesting. <laughs> well, Alex was talking about rugby. Yeah. yeah. I think that's probably nuts. Useful. Rugby. All right, yeah. I mean, we need though. to follow up with you. Interesting. <laughs> um, somebody else actually just tweeted about the same thing and said, I was on a college women's rugby team. The drinking culture and hazing is insane. Yeah. Oh, that's and then I feel like it's kind yeah. of like a, it's probably like maybe like, you know, kind of like sororities. Once you get past that initial phase, it's probably an incredible sense of like sisterhood and being a really tight knit team. I don't know. Team. I wasn't in a sorority, so. Neither did I. I pledged a sorority for a couple days and then I quit because I was like, this is dumb. <laughs> it's expensive. I did it for a year and I felt the same way. Yeah, because they like, like, want to make hair. you memorize stuff and you're like, I have things to do. I'm going to memorize this stuff. <laughs> it's true. We should do an episode about Greek life. Yeah. We should totally do an episode yeah. about Greek life. Who I would, again, I'll I wear my sorority pin. <laughs> <laughs> I, have st I still have mine. I think you're supposed to return it after you quit, but I still have mine. Um, the not. official rules of my sorority, I'm not kidding, for Gamma Phi Beta, are that you have to... <gasps> That's you my sorority! Oh my god! You have to... Okay, so this is... You guys have, like, a symbol. You have like to like return a... the pin <laughs> when you I die, said. because oh. the membership is only for life. 
that's actually like in the laws. Wow. Oh my gosh, I didn't know we were in the same sorority. Yeah. We'll talk to Don't tell anybody. Do we have a Don't handshake? Have, yeah, it's like, like, like the skulls. There's all that secretive stuff. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. Maybe it's just like vagina sign. I don't think it's not that. It's not this. Are you sure? Can I just continue to do this? Frank, I'm looking down your list of ideas, but nothing compares to your tired women idea. I kind of just want to talk about that again. (laughs) Oh, um, Caitlin Fitzpatrick tweeted, Hey, Cosmopolitan, me and the other Seventeen Magazine interns just met CJ in the elevator. We love Cosmo Live. (laughs) Thanks, CJ. Good job. Brand. We just ride an elevator up and down. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a good promo. That's what he does the whole rest of the day. You just have yeah. to yeah. Up and, like, to promote yeah. Cosmo Live. <laughs> that was a good representation. Those girls are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Frank, do you want to tell us about tired women? Okay. That sort of relates to sports. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was sports related. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna go on like a rant about this. But we were at a pitch meeting the other week. <laughs> And I said, like, a lot of women I know always get super tired all the time, like, including my girlfriend, and, like, just, I don't know, I, I never get so tired to just pass out, like, where I'm sitting. Give us an example of when Finish the story, tired. though. Yeah. Don't tell the rest of the story. Which? The, the rest of the story. <laughs> the story that you told at the meeting. Oh, where she at? She, like, she's just, like, I need all my stuff. I'm going home. And she just, like, woke up and just, like, took all her stuff and left. And I'm just, like, all right, see you oh, tomorrow. Did you think you were breaking up? <laughs> no, I thought she was playing a prank on me, honestly. So, like, we, have a pretty, we have a really good relationship, so like, I really thought she was just like trying to like mess with me because it was also on April Fool's Day. So I was like, what just happened? And you just told the next day, she's like, yeah, I was just really tired. <laughs> that doesn't happen! <laughs> it, <laughs> but like, I know other, like, so many other people, like my friend's girlfriend does the same thing, just like that? passes out like wherever. You said in your like story um, that just what was published the other day that um, <laughs> on this <laughs> interesting topic <laughs> that you saw someone... <laughs> A woman fell asleep while she was eating. <laughs> that was one of my friends. Yeah, just like was eating. Just threw all the way to her mouth. So like, just <laughs> I don't, I don't know. No, like, in my in my house, like a friend that I had over, like we're all Did hanging out. I don't know. I don't know if I just like had that effect on people. If I'm just like hanging out with people and I'm that boring that they just pass out. No, I actually your article really um, struck a chord with me because I fall asleep everywhere. <laughs> you get super tired. Yeah. yeah. So you like go over to your boyfriend and you're like, give me all my stuff, and then the next day you're like, I was so tired that I did that. That is <laughs> Those totally Those things creepy. are not related. <laughs> yes, I do not do that. But I have had the thing where it like sets in instantly, and I'm like, yeah. can't speak like, another word. That's what happened. She just like woke up and was like, super you know what that is? Like, that's like not... that movie where. Young Ed Nor- Edward Norton like kills a person and then is like, I just lost time. Remember, no. your girlfriend's losing time. Oh, so she's. Are you murder. dating Edward? She Norton? probably You're kills dating. anyone. Yeah. She's My probably, girlfriend is Edward Norton. She's probably <laughs> starting to have a complete psychosis. She's watching now. You gotta bring him to the office. <laughs> yeah, do you want to interview her? Okay. Wave to Frank's girlfriend. But I know it's not just me. A doctor said that <laughs> this can happen. Maybe. <laughs> Wait, you asked a doctor about yeah, it? Yeah, I called someone. For the story. <laughs> Oh, After right. we laughed, it just no, no, not like. <laughs> How did you like call him up? Like, yeah. what she said was that if a woman drinks, it might make her more tired in the next few days than a man. Which is so Which is not different the, from right. a woman will definitely fall asleep while she's eating a piece of fried chicken <laughs> <laughs> because she's a woman. Also, women will act erratically and then like be like, "I was tired," which is why I did that. That erratically. That's pretty erratic. Hmm. Totally not. Disagree. No? <laughs> you don't think this is as amusing? Well, I'm tired right now, so I'm not going to remember like that I said anything. Yeah, you just smelled CJ before because you were tired. <laughs> no, I wasn't actually you tired. You smelled I was just, CJ? No, I wasn't thinking. CJ Wake was like, here, smell me. And I was like, and I was like, oh, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Case in point, QED. <laughs> it's a little different. No, but she doesn't. She wasn't tired. She was half out of it. She yeah, I was just not paying attention. She was like, I was not paying attention. She when I'm not paying attention, I just do what anybody tells me to do. <laughs> Good to know. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, for future. Okay, ones. Frank, do you have a real idea about Running sports? Right down. Because you're boring, Carly. <laughs> I'm kidding. Are you, so falling, asleep? Are you falling asleep? Are you falling asleep? You're getting sleepy. <laughs> tired women. Tired women. <laughs> Whatever. I'm tired. It's my personal tired experience. That's my personal journey, guys. Um, <laughs> You're making Carly tired, so I guess we've confirmed your theory. Okay. No, I'm, I'm actually really fascinated by uh, women in mixed martial arts right now, because it's literally the exact same sport, and like they're trying to get it televised, and so it's not picking up the same amount of steam as like men's UFC, and like there's this weird like counterculture to it, where people are like giving them a lot of crap for it when there's like absolutely no reason. Um, so I, I kind of want to write about that or interview someone. Who's Why in the sport. are they giving it 
giving them crap for it. It's just chauvinistic. It's legitimately just, I mean, like, they, they, they have some, like, insane, like, amazing fights, like, just on par with men's fights. What do you mean by mixed martial arts? Uh, like, UFC. So it's... Cage fighting. Oh, yeah, like, cage, cage fighting. fighting stuff, yeah. This is not in my world. Oh, He's okay. like, UFC, she's like, <laughs> and, oh. I'm sorry, that's, like, relatively big, so it's... Do you I mean, know what this is? No. I mean, I feel like I've heard about <laughs> do you it. Alex? I didn't even... I thought cage I sort fighting of know. was, like, an urban legend. Like, no, UFC is actually like, like, actually like actually in a cage. Yeah, yeah. like in America. <laughs> the top so it's, it's just like game. a fenced-in. This is what we do here. Welcome. It's <laughs> it's gaining a lot of momentum. It's becoming a big sport. So it's uh. And so women do this as well. Women man. do it as well. Yeah. So Why are they? Do they, they fight cage? men or they only fight like other women? It's, 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 it's only fight other women. That's like that, and that's the only difference. I don't know. Why is Andy Ortiz's wife does it? You guys. This is like two steps away from fighting a bear. Like she's like high up. I think she's like I think she's like a professional one. Oh. How do you become a professional cage fighter? Like, what's the difference? What are, what qualifications? <laughs> I think it's the same thing as the Olympics. Yeah. Isn't it? it's you come like up you like go in a, up, a circuit, just, just like, like you tournaments. Would, yeah. Well, if you're a professional athlete, it means you get paid. Yeah, they make pretty good money. So if we were doing this in a cage, it wouldn't have been like doing this. <laughs> How about we all have to cage have fighting? Put down we'll our ice first. In the cage. So, <laughs> yeah. like, if we got their license, then you guys know all of us. If we had a tournament where we individually fought one another, it's like the games. Alex. Alright, pretend CJ's not here. Yeah. No, CJ would let someone win, though. I would win. CJ would let someone win. <laughs> Alex used to play rugby. Alex would obviously yeah, exactly. win. Yeah, exactly. You, Kyle, you're pink rugby, now starting. Yeah, 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 yeah. You would all be caught on guard. <laughs> Is he going to grab my balls? Yeah. <laughs> and then he would win. They're, they're going to hit you in the face. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm out. It's about hitting the face, so. <laughs> My dream. No. <laughs> Elisa, any other tweets from our followers on Twitter? Um... <laughs> I think actually this is dating back to when we were talking about kickball or dodgeball, but um, Caitlin just tweeted, dodgeball is much worse. I play in an adult league kickball and it's the best. So there's somebody out there who's playing. I know there are people. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. She's playing to the level. Yeah. You could join a league for a week and write about it. <laughs> um, I've got a great too far for you. Actually. You'd cage fight? I would cage fight over that, yeah. I would okay, fight. you'll cage I fight. I would choose actual physical violence over... Maybe you can do that in Tampa when you're down there. <laughs> yeah, my great Tampa, Tampa adventure. Tampa. Did you plan your trip yet? No. Well, we can't send you until you send me an outline of it. I know, but I feel like I now I've even forgotten the grain of the actual sane idea that you I had about Tampa. Mermaid, mermaid <laughs> Station, what other... Well, that was my... <laughs> oh, the Mermaid Depot? Oh, yeah. yeah, the Mermaid Depot. <laughs> <laughs> You can page fight the mermaid. Oh, I was going to hang out with Courtney Cox. Yeah. Like but a shot. Other than that, like you're going to be on, on set. On set with her. Alex yeah. wants you to cage fight a mermaid like a underwater shot in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll include that in the proposal. <laughs> okay. Okay, well I think that's all the time we have for today, guys. <laughs> we're so tired! <laughs> Because we're mostly really women. Scared. Not the boys, but the boys are We are tired. We must go. Kayla um, lost all faith in oh, anything Kayla. she came in with right now. Are you Kayla, tired? Are you tired? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> See, okay. Stay Fair frank, enough. okay? The final word from Kayla. Okay, guys. Kayla, thank you so much for joining us. And everyone, thank you. Thank, thank, you. Kayla. thank you so much for tuning in to this week's edition of Cosmo Live. We will see you next Tuesday at 4 p.m. for the next Cosmo Live. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.